All right, hello and welcome everyone to the May 2021 virtual field trip to Overland Preserve. My name is Michelle Brocious and I'm your bird walk leader. This evening, I am a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. And a little bit about uh, what this program is about for those of you who may not have attended before. Every month I select a location for participants to go and visit independently and um, have from the first of the month to the last of the month to make at least one visit out. And then I ask those participants to submit something to me to put into a presentation, uh, usually journaling, bird lists, or photography. Um, I'm open to receiving poetry, artwork, you know, whatever um, creative thing you want to provide to me. And I, I put that in this presentation that I'm presenting this evening. And we participants do one or the other or the other or both. And some people go to the preserve but don't attend the call and some people just attend the call and some people do both. So just however you want to enjoy this program is fine with me. All right, so a little bit about the Overland Preserve. So the Land Conservancy, it's the Western Reserve Land Conservancy, recently restored approximately half of the preserve to a native prairie, a rare habitat type that takes particular uh, management strategies to remain healthy over time. With few prairie areas in the region, the property provides a unique glimpse of native grasses, shrubs, and pollinators. Since its initial restoration planting, nearly 600 native wildflower plants, more than 50 native trees, and 30 acres of prairie seed have been planted by corporate and community volunteers, as well as students from Oberlin College. Um, prairie species spotted this summer include big blue stem, nodding wild rye, blazing star, rose milkweed, rattlesnake master, prairie dock, Virginia mountain mint, and cup plant. The Overland Preserve also includes an additional habit also includes additional habitat types such as fields, woodlands, wet sedge meadow, and forested vernal pools. These habitats provide shelter, food, and nesting areas for birds, amphibians, small and large mammals, and other wildlife. The site has been host to, to scientific research and biology surveys as far back as 1888, according to records at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. An additional point of significance for the land includes its previous owners, the Copeland family, notable black political figures around the time of the Civil War. Delilah Evans Copeland and her husband, John Copeland Sr., came to Oberlin in 1843 to protect their children from slavery. Once in Oberlin, the Copelands were very active in the abolitionist movement and fugitive slave assistance network in the 1850s through 1860s. Um, those three paragraphs were taken from the Western Reserve Land Conservancy Oberlin Preserve website. And I've included a photo of the wetland area of Oberlin Preserve Southwoods. I did not get a picture of the prairie area, um, but that is the area when you first pull in that you will see. All right, so we had uh, two target species uh, for this month, or the month of May. The first just general target species, spring warblers. So a warbler is a small songbird in the family Perulidae, most of which sport bright colors and interesting patterns in the spring. Warblers primarily feed on insects and depend on a warm climate where their main food source can thrive. They therefore migrate to the tropics in the winter and return north in the spring as temperatures begin to rise. And I did find that the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Wildlife has a wonderful booklet available online called Warblers of Ohio. Um, I recommend, I put the link in there um, for, you know, when, when this um, presentation is published. You can go in there and click it or just search the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Wildlife for Warblers of Ohio online. And it's a PDF that you can download and it's, it's really quite cool. It has all the, the warblers that come to Ohio, even some rare ones and it. It says where you can find them and some um, hot spots around the state for finding warblers. So it, it's a really cool book. And then a photo of a yellow rump warbler at Overland Preserve by Sean Missig on the right there. Our second target species, the American goldfinch. This handsome little finch, the state bird of New Jersey, Iowa, and Washington, is welcome and common at feeders where it takes primarily sunflower and niger. Goldfinches often flock with pine siskins and common red poles. Spring males are brilliant yellow and shiny black with a bit of white. Females and all winter birds are more dull but identifiable by their conical bill, pointed notched tail, wing bars, and lack of streaking. 
during molt, they look bizarrely patchy. That was taken from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology American Goldfinch page. And a photo of an American Goldfinch at, and this is at the Rocky River Nature Center by myself. Um, the American Goldfinch was sighted uh, by uh, most everyone who went, uh, just we didn't get a picture of it at the preserve, so using a different picture. All right, so first up is myself. I uh, tallied a total of 11 species over two visits, and I will say that in my defense, I had my kids with me both times. So I like to think that's why I didn't get as many species as I normally would. All right, so I visited Overland Preserve on May 23rd and 31st. I arrived at 10.30 a.m. on the 23rd with my two children, Lito, who is eight years old, and Sagan, who is six years old. I usually like to start my birding adventures a little earlier in the morning, but Sundays are pancake days for us, which takes a little longer, especially when you you have kids. So with bellies full of pancakes, we arrived on a sunny mid-morning with temps already in the 80s. We donned our hats and sunscreen and stepped out of the car. The first thing about the prairie that attracted my kids were some purple irises. All three of us spent some time taking photos of the lovely flowers. We were also thrilled to see three ruby-throated hummingbirds visiting the wildflowers as well. So there's a picture I took of an iris at the Oberlin Preserve. And two more photos of the lovely irises at Oberlin Preserve. Right, I was delighted to see a chimney swift tower courtesy of a Girl Scout troop. However, no chimney swifts were observed. Instead, there were several tree, tree swallows buzzing around the prairie, occasionally stopping a perch on a nesting box or going inside. So on the left, there's a picture of the uh, chimney swift tower. And then on the right, a tree swallow perched on top of a nesting box. My right, Black River Audubon has a huge bluebird program with over 470 nesting boxes, so it is no surprise they are involved with nesting boxes at Oberlin Preserve. However, this particular box is occupied by a tree swallow this year. I didn't happen to see any bluebirds during my visit. All right, here's my kids. So we started taking the trail through the prairie that's closest to the West Hamilton Street towards some new plantings. The kids enjoyed the fun items attached to some of the protective fencing. We continued our walk and Lito was just saying that he wished we would have, we would see some snakes when a snake zipped right across the trail. We had another one zip across the trail before our 36 minute visit was over. So there's Lito on the left and then Sagan on the right, both pointing out um, it looks like some sort of crocheted um, item attached to the fencing uh, on the left and this big fork and the fork I think was actually helping the tree kind of stay upright on the right hand side there. All right, so that was it for the first visit. So only Sagan accompanied me during my visit on May 31st. This time we were determined to make it to the Southwoods area of the preserve. We arrived at 9.18 a.m. and found to much relief that temps were cooler than the prior visit. Sagan managed to explore with me for one hour and 46 minutes. So well done, Sagan. That was a long time for a six-year-old. Um, the tree swallows were present once again, but our determination to make it to the south woods was so great that I was only permitted to photograph an American robin on our way through the prairie. We took the trail that cuts across the prairie to the east to access the Ramsey right of way trail, and we walked all the way to Route 20. And so there's uh, the photo of the American robin that Sagan did let me stop to take a picture of. Mm -hmm. So along the Ramsey right of way trail, we saw a northern cardinal gray catbird and song sparrow. The wetland areas along the trail were especially interesting and we paused there to enjoy the painted turtles basking in the sun. This is also where we encountered the woodpeckers. Both a red-headed woodpecker and three red-bellied woodpeckers made an appearance. So there's a picture I took of Cardinal on the left. Oh, and then here is Sagan. Um, He's enjoying the south woods on, in that left picture there. I think we had just made it to the trail. And then um, he's enjoying the wetlands at Oberlin Preserve on the right hand side. And then here are two of the painted turtles. These are two different individuals. And the one on the right is actually a lot smaller than the one that's on the left. I think it was a, a, younger, a younger turtle. And two pictures of the, this is the same individual, the same red-headed woodpecker. 
at Overland Preserve. Our final bird as we prepared to exit the Ramsey right-of-way trail to return to the prairie was a great crested flycatcher. We did get a good look at its yellow belly before it turned its back on us, and all two lovely visits to Overland Preserve. And here's my bird list. Uh, notable species, ruby-threaded hummingbird, red-headed woodpecker, great crested flycatcher. I did not see either target species when I went. No goldfinches, no warblers. Um, and then a photo of the red-headed woodpecker, another photo of that same red-headed woodpecker on the left-hand side. All right, so Mary Ann and John Henderson saw 42 species on their visit on May 24th. So Mary Ann says, the preserve offers 0.7 miles of accessible trails, all prairie habitat. We finished birding there in less than an hour. However, immediately to the east is the Ramsey right-of-way trail. The 1.2 mile woodland trail runs from West Hamilton Street to US 20, and it was here that we found the best birding. While we were on the trail, we heard the angry calling of several agitated crows. We could not see what had upset the crows, but we might have heard it. A great horned owl started hooting from the same general direction as the crows cause. Um, so a tip that she shares that toilets can be found at the Oberlin Recreational Complex fields just east of the preserve and the trail. So yes, there are no restroom facilities at the preserve, um, but it looks like there are there is something you can use close by. All right, and the photo on the right is the photo of the Ramsey right-of-way trail that I took at Oberlin Preserve. And here, um, massive 42 species bird list. So notable species I always highlight in red. Um, it's just what I choose, what I think stands out to me. Your notable species might be different and that's okay. So killdeer, red-tailed hawk, the great horned owl, of course, red-headed woodpecker, um, the Easterwood peewee, willow flycatcher, and least flycatcher. I thought those were really cool to see. The American crow, uh, common yellow throat, American red star, yellow warbler, Canada warbler, and I did miss that American goldfinch, number 31. So they did see um, both target species. And beautiful photo of a tree swallow at Oberlin Preserve by Tom Fishburne. All right, Nancy, you are on the line. Would you like to cover your submission? Sure. Yep, I was able to visit twice, um, not during the better weather like other folks did. I visited earlier in May, as you can see, May 8th and 15th, and both of them were pretty cool days. Um, the 8th was a day when there was uh, you know, rain showers coming in, very much like what we've been having here. You know, a cloud comes along and psh, rains, and then it gets sunny, and then another cloud comes along. But it was pretty cool. But um, May 8th was also International Migratory Bird Day. And so I thought, hmm, why not? Um, I also got a photo of the Chimney Swift Tower, as you can see. Uh, my photos, oh man, Michelle, I hope you didn't put some of them in. <laughs> they're really awesome. Well, they're, they're, they're all in. in with my <laughs> they're all good. <laughs> this one's not bad. Um, yeah, so. I also noted that this is one of the preserves uh, of the Western Reserve Land Conservancy and uh, it was easy to find. Um, the, the City of Oberlin walking trail, I guess that's called the Ramsey right away. Is that, yeah, I didn't, yes. I didn't pay attention. So that's, when I say the City of Oberlin walking trail, that's what I mean by that Ramsey trail. Um, and uh, the, the First thing I saw again was that chimney swift tower, but um, it, there were tree swallows, as others had mentioned. Um, I did get eastern bluebird uh, on one of the boxes as well, and uh, I did take the the trail through the prairie field and onto that Ramsey trail. Um, of course, the the field was super wet and not had not grown up very well. So I didn't really notice any prairie plants. And of course, prairies, as, as we might know, um, are a little bit better in the summer and into the fall when the grasses are tall and the, the, wild, and the flowers are tending to bloom there. So I think it would be fun to, to visit in, uh, again, a different season. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, 
So the first visit, the, there were lots, there was lots of water uh, in the prairie area. Killdeer and solitary sandpiper were were seen there, and then um, but a week later, things were completely dry. So no shorebirds. Next slide, please. And oh yeah, <laughs> you see that blob that's in the middle of the photo. <laughs> See that blob out? Yeah, there you go. That is a juvenile, a baby great horned owl. I mean, it was flighted, but um, it had wing, all its wing feathers, its tail feathers. It could fly, but it there, it was very, very fuzzy in the body and the head. Um, so, it's, as uh, Michelle mentioned, that the, that walking trail runs through lots of habitats: wet woodlands, uh, small wetlands, some shrubland, farmland. And there's even a little cul-de-sac from a housing development uh, that ends through there. So, but again, can bring some different species in. Uh, the forest birds, of course, different woodpeckers, flycatchers, thrushes, vireos, grosbeak, jays, titmouse, chickadee, nuthatch. And on the first visit, I had four uh, male wild turkeys that came out of the woods. And if you're familiar with wild turkey, um, you know the males they're they're just super long legged and slim, and they were they saw me on the trail and they walked ahead of me and they were walking faster and faster and faster uh, but I just like to look at wild turkeys they're just kind of fun um, and then during the second visit was when I was surprised by the uh, juvenile great horned owls that were perched in the oak um, as I mentioned, the wing and tail feathers were were in they could fly. And the crows were pestering something else that I could not see. So it may have been another young great horned owl. It could have been one of the adult great horns, like the like the Hendersons had mentioned. Next slide, please. All right. So again, the the wetland opening uh, in the woods was really pretty active on both visits. Um, surrounded by oaks, and there were lots of dead trees. Uh, and I took a photo of the prothonotary warbler nest boxes that ha have been erected there. Um, I did talk with a visitor to the uh, site um, on my second visit, and he said that the boxes were put up a couple years ago, but they have not had prothonotaries uh, uh, check them out yet, or they haven't seen any. Uh, I did not see any either. Uh, but uh, on the second visit, I did have red-headed woodpeckers, probably the same ones Michelle got a photo of, and maybe others also got a photo of. So prothonotary warblers are one of the few warblers, maybe the only warbler, that nests in, in uh, cavities. So if it were a natural cavity in a, in a dead tree, and they will take two nest boxes, like you see the one uh, attached to the tree. All right, next slide, please. Uh, see, I got turtles too. So I like I like to watch turtles. Um, so warblers, they were pretty scattered on those two days. Um, so during the two visits, I had 11 species, and we'll be getting to the checklist shortly. Uh, some only May 8th, and some uh, seen on May 11th only, and a few that were seen both days. Um, <laughs> What was funny, and I don't know if anybody else who tra traveled all the way to Route 20, um, there was apparently a farm with with uh, peacocks, or at least a peacock, and both times it was calling when I got to that area. So I guess I could add another species, the Indian peafowl, uh, <laughs> to my list, which I did not. So, and I did feel like I was in an old Tarzan movie when the with the peacocks calling. Um, so. Again, hopefully I'll be able to get to that uh, preserve uh, at a time when the prairie is at its peak. That would be nice. And I think, yeah, the bird list. Ooh, boy, it looks like it's going to go over a couple of slides. Oh, my lousy picture of a red-headed woodpecker. <laughs> you can see one. The back is toward us, that white blob. Thank you. And then there's one to the right. Now, they were pretty accommodating. They didn't, they didn't fly away, so I was able to get up fairly close with my little uh, silly phone camera and, and zoom in. So as you can see, uh, Michelle highlighted a, a number of, 
of birds uh, in red, the hummingbird, a couple different hawks, great horned owl, the red-headed woodpeckers, um, a lot of the same birds that the Hendersons had, the peewee, least flycatcher, uh, great crested flycatcher, a number of vireos as you see. The next slide. And um, I'm just looking to see if I, I like, I, again, in the woods, the, the Swainsons and the wood thrush are always nice to hear. The northern water thrush, again, this, is, this was earlier in May, so this is when, when uh, things like northern water thrush, oven bird are still calling, Tennessee and Nashville warblers. Common yellow throat are there, should be there now, as well as yellows. Um, and you can see a few other warblers. And I see that I forgot to highlight the American goldfinch. I will go back oh. in and do that. But you got that, and that was our target species. So yeah. you had yeah. so much, it was hard <laughs> to see what you had there. Yeah, and that's a really dark photo of the ominous clouds. Uh, I really like it. I really like that photo. The, the yeah, sky that was, is really that, blue. And, yeah. That was on that first, that May 8th, when, you know, your shower had gone through, and then it was starting mm -hmm. to brighten up. So it was, was cool. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Nancy. That, that was a fantastic two trips you had. Thank you for sharing all that. And that's great that you saw 74 species. So maybe I someday really, I'll get to that, that forest area slowly because it, okay. it was slow. And then, again, it picked up a little bit as, as the temperatures warmed up. But, again, both those days were not exactly toasty mm -hmm. warm. Right. Yeah, that was earlier in May. And I think yep. we had some snow maybe around uh, that time. Close, yeah. The snow was Mother's yeah. Day. Yeah, that was a little before. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. All right. So now um, and Sean has unfortunately has not been able to join us yet. He is stuck at work. So I will go ahead and cover his slides. So Sean Missig um, saw 26 species and he visited the preserve four times. The dates visited May 1st, 8th, 15th, and 30th. He says, when I first arrived to the Oberlin Preserve, I was wondering if I was in the right place. The parking lot was small and all I saw was an open field that wasn't fully grown in, but did have paths cut into it. After I parked, I was relieved to find a map near the parking area. There was a lot more to this place than I could see from the parking area and I was indeed in the right place. After studying the map, I decided I was going to check out the wetland areas and started to make my way to the path. The first birds I noticed were tree swallows that were carving their way through the air and occupying the bird boxes that had been set up. These birds are a lot of fun to watch when they fly, so I didn't mind starting my trip with about 10 minutes of their aerial stunts. As I continued along the path, there wasn't much else going on. I made my way over to a service road and began, I think he's talking about, you know, the Ramsey Trail, and began walking along the path instead. The first uh, birds that showed up here were a couple of northern flicker. I saw two females that were quite active and jumping around from branch to branch while making calls. There was no male in sight, but I did hear calls from a distance. Hopefully I would find the male as I make my way further down the trail. There's a picture of the female northern flicker at Oberlin Preserve. How you can tell that it's a female is uh, a male would have a black uh, mark right here um, that, that's called a mustache. All right, so two more females um, at Oberlin Preserve by Sean Missig. I think that the one on the left is the same as the one on the previous page, and I'm not sure if this one on the right is the, the second female he mentioned or if that's still the same one. All right, the next point of interest was near the housing development. As I neared the opening, a male house bench landed in a small tree nearby and stuck out like a sore thumb. I continued my journey and made it to the wetland. Here I found many turtles basking in the sun on logs and fallen trees in the water. I also noted several red-headed woodpeckers hanging around a couple of dead trees. Sometimes they appeared to be fighting, and others, they all got along. I had ventured past the wetland on this trip, but did not see anything. On my way back, I finally found the male northern flicker. He was hiding high up on a tree toward the back of the wetland, and if he wasn't making calls, I probably would have missed him. As I continued back, I saw many of the resident birds, including cardinal, blue jay, white-breasted nuthatch, song sparrow, and morning dove. It wasn't until I found my way back to the path in the field that I noticed 15 turkey vultures were now circling over parts of the field and the wooded areas near 
areas nearby. Definitely a great way to end the day. So there's a picture of the house finch at Oberlin Preserve by Sean Missig on the left. And then he mentioned red-headed woodpeckers. So there are two of his red-headed woodpecker photos at Oberlin Preserve. Another red-headed woodpecker on the left. And then the male northern flicker on the right at Oberlin Preserve. And you can kind of see there that, that black mark indicating that that's a male. All right, photos of a northern cardinal on the left and song sparrow on the right at Oberlin Preserve. And then um, two more song sparrows at the preserve by Sean Missig. All right, he says, on my second trip on 5-8, uh, the landscape had already changed. What a difference a week made. The field had started to grow in and more flowers were blooming. This gave me a great excuse to use my macro lens. As I was walking along the surface road again, I noticed a spider was laying in the middle of a flower and took a few shots. This spider didn't have a care in the world and just stayed in place when I took pictures and as the flowers swayed in the wind. As I took pictures and as the flowers swayed in the wind. The area by the housing development was full of life again. This time I spotted Baltimore Orioles in the trees and flying in and out of the area. Their vibrant orange color really stood out and was beautiful and was a beautiful addition to this trip. After I made my way across the cul-de-sac, there was a small area on the left that had heavy cover and water. There were many birds and chipmunks using the area for drinking and bathing. I was watching closely and then I saw a yellow rump warbler land on a branch. This bird was not sitting still, but I focused in and held the shutter button down. Thankfully, I was able to get a few shots before it flew away. The photo on the right of the spider on the flower at Oberlin Preserve. And here are two pictures of the Baltimore, Baltimore Oriole at Oberlin Preserve by Sean Missig. Looks really nice against that brilliant blue sky. And then two photos of the yellow rumped warbler at Oberlin Preserve. All right, so at this point, I was very happy with the day and the shots I was able to capture. Little did I know this trip had more tricks up its sleeve. As I got closer to the wetland area, I spotted an unfamiliar bird on the left side of the trail and turned my attention to it. Once I focused my camera, I realized that this would be my first lifer for this location. A male red-breasted grosbeak was looking right at me, and I was ecstatic. This bird has been on my list for quite some time, and I was able to cross it off now. The bird was rather still and didn't seem to mind me taking pictures of it, and it even stayed still as I walked past to continue my journey. I did not see a female red-breasted grosbeak at any point during any of my visits. Past the wetland area, I encountered some Carolina wren playing within the brush. A hairy woodpecker also made a brief appearance and flew off before I got a shot. On my way back up the path, I spotted a brown-headed cowbird, American goldfinch, gray catbird, and even had two ruby-throated hummingbirds fly by my head. They were close enough that I could hear the buzzing of their wings as they flew by. This was a great visit, and I couldn't wait to come back again. So that beautiful picture on the left there um, of the red breasted grosbeak at Oberlin Preserve by Sean Missig. And of course, I've given him uh, his Lifer Award. I think it's been a couple months since I've been able to give one of those out. So congratulations, Sean. Um, two more pictures of the rose breasted grosbeak at Oberlin Preserve by Sean Missig. All right. The visit on 515 was very familiar, or sorry, was very similar to the previous two, with the only new species to add being a white crowned sparrow, Canada goose, and a flyover from a great blue heron. Again, I spent the majority of my time near the wetland and cul-de-sac areas. My final trip on 530 was one that I wasn't sure if I was going to make or not. I already had a lot of pictures and data on the location, but I decided that I was going to make one last trip no matter what, and started my day there. After I arrived, the clouds broke up and the sun started to shine. This was the break I had been hoping for since the day before was nothing but cold and gloomy skies. With the sun now warming everything, the path came to life. This time it brought out many different species of dragonflies and damselflies. I have always loved the unique colors of dragonflies and damselflies since I was young, and this day really brought out the kid in me. 
So, um, and, and he identified these. I'm not a big, um, I, I, I do enjoy dragonflies and damselflies, but I am not knowledgeable about species identification for them. Uh, so he identified this one as an eastern pond hawk um, that he took at Oberlin Preserve. And then he provided uh, this Wikipedia definition. I, you know, I do have a field guide of dragonflies and damselflies um, published by the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Um, I still it, it, it's massive, and I, I didn't want to try and, and figure out what these were. <laughs> um, but I did look in that field guide for a definition as well. Uh, so I'm not always a big fan of Wikipedia. It's not always 100% accurate. But then looking at this definition that Sean provided from Wikipedia, it is accurate. I, you know, I, I compared it to the information in the field guide, and this is more succinct. So I, I let Sean keep it in here. So I'm going to read it. A dragonfly is an insect belonging to the order Odonata, uh, infraorder Anisoptera, um, from Greek meaning unequal and wing. I'm not going to. I don't know how to read the Greek writing, so I won't even try. Um, because the, the hind wing is broader than the forewing. Adult dragonflies are characterized by large, multifaceted eyes, two pairs of strong, transparent wings, sometimes with colored patches and an elongated body. Dragonflies can be mistaken for the related group damselflies, Zygoptera, uh, which are similar in structure, though usually lighter in build. However, the wings of most dragonflies are held flat and away from the body while damselflies hold their wings folded at rest along or above the abdomen. Um, and so you can tell this right here is a, a dragonfly. Its wings are spread out. Um, this is the long-tailed skimmer, according to Sean, uh, that he took at the Overland Preserve. And then on this next page, uh, a dragonfly and a damselfly side by side. So as you can see, you know the, the wings are held out. And it's a big body, and then the damselfly, uh, very narrow, thin body, and the wings are tucked back behind it. Um, this one the, on the left, identified as a painted skimmer, uh, just labeled the damselfly on the right. SP question mark means we don't have a species identification. Um, both photos taken at Overland Preserve. Right, after I spent some time chasing these creatures around, I made my way to the wetland area for a final visit. This would prove to be the best visit yet. When I arrived to the wetland, I spotted a bird sitting on a branch by itself. It looked like an eastern kingbird or eastern phoebe based on the shape and lack of color, but I was too far away to make that call. So I took a few shots anyways. As always, this paid off. After I cropped in on the bird, lifted the shadows, and brought out some of the color, this turned out to be a great crusted flycatcher, my second lifer from Overland Preserve. After these shots, I had spotted a red bird off in the distance that I thought was a cardinal. As I got closer, this bird looked way too bright to be a cardinal, and I was correct. This was a scarlet tanager and my third lifer at the Overland Preserve. The scarlet tanager is another bird that has been on my list of photographs since I started photographing nature in 2020, and I can proudly cross this one off the list as well. On the walk back through the wetlands, I was finally able to get pictures of a hummingbird as it rested on the top of a dead tree. I couldn't think of a better way to end this trip. So congratulations again to Sean for a second lifer. Great crest of flycatcher at Overland Preserve on the left-hand side there. And then, um, pictures of his lifer Scarlet Tanager at Overland Preserve. And these are the photos of the ruby-threaded hummingbird at Overland Preserve by Sean Missig. Perched on top of that dead tree. Oh, and here is his bird list. Notable species, Carolina Wren, Baltimore Oriole, Yellow Rumped Warbler, um, a lifer for the rose-breasted grosbeak, American goldfinch was a target species, ruby-throated hummingbird, um, and then uh, two more lifers, the scarlet tanager and the great crested flycatcher, and then a photo of a red-bellied woodpecker at Overland Preserve by Sean on the left-hand side. All right, Tom, this takes us to your slides. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, sure. Um, first off, I want to say it's, I almost fell over when I saw your picture of the iris. I I only made it uh, early in the month of May 4th, and the 
you know, the prairie had changed a lot, I guess, by the end. I was hoping to get there again uh, later, but May was just so busy for me, I never made it back. And I can see by everybody else's list of pictures what I missed. So yeah. it, was, it was pretty neat. But that I've been wanting, I've gotten a couple pictures of irises from time to time, but to have them right there like you had, that was fantastic. Thank you. And, uh, I have yet, I got a glimpse of a scarlet tanager this year, but um, last year was good for scarlet tanagers and actually, you know, wrote an article for the, for WCAS about them uh, last year. But this year I've really been missing the, the scarlet tanagers, but, but I'm doing good in a lot of other ways. But as far as uh, Overland Preserve goes, um, yeah, it was an overcast morning when I visited uh, early in May. Uh, and I got to the parking area there on Hamilton Street, not familiar, you know, with um, with well, what I was going to see. But, you know, the, right away the field, uh, even though it was early, I was still impressed with it. And there were a lot of tree swallows uh, there. But then the, the brown-headed cowbirds got my attention. Um, and uh, I did spot this eastern bluebird uh, as well uh, in the distance in the field. Uh, had the house finch cardinal and a red iberio. Uh, when you're in the park a lot looking south, there's a, like a tree line on the right or um, western side, I guess. And uh, so I found a few things in there before I wandered over to the eastern side to the to that Ramsey Trail. But uh, but yeah, I um, saw that the Black River Audubon Society had these uh, boxes set up and. Uh, and uh, I spent some time taking some pictures of the tree swallows, that's for sure. So there's one. Uh, what do you got next? Okay, yeah, on the left there is the um, female uh, brown-headed cowbird with the uh, the male in the background. And uh, yeah, that picture for some reason looks different than, than to me than the one I had, but it, it's basically it. Um, and then the bluebird on the that was a far that was a big crop picture of that bluebird on the on the right hand side out in the field. Uh, okay, what you got next? We have on the left we got the um, uh, house finch, and uh, the right the cardinal that was along that tree line before I went further. Next. Uh, yeah, I was really happy in the woods there to spot the rose-breasted grosbeak, um, and uh, I didn't get a clear shot of it like Sean did. But I, after I was there that day, I I did text Sean and, and let him know that um, things were were ha starting to happen down there and uh, to look out for the rose-breasted grosbeak. I'm mean, real happy he got his, and yeah, I was um, surprised. I, I walked down to the south woods there. I did hear an oven bird, uh, but it was deep in the woods. I saw the rose breasted grosbeak. Then at, at the wetlands, um, I heard the red headed woodpeckers, but I didn't really get a look. And the great crest of flycatcher, I couldn't get my really eyes on it either, but could hear it. But then this uh, red tail uh, flew right up along the trail and perched there on that, uh, that dead tree there for a few seconds, and I was able to get a picture of that. So. Um, that that was uh, pretty neat for me on that day. Uh, what you got next? And yeah, then further down, um, there were uh, these indigo bunnings. Uh, it was dark, and uh, so these pictures aren't as sharp as I would like, but uh, there were several indigo bunnings. And um, I wasn't brushed up on my uh, um, bunting um, variations. And... So I noticed the the one on the right there, um, you know, I kind of thought, well, would that be a female? I was what I was, I was figuring, but it's only when I got home I realized well, it was a first year male. Um, when I looked at my um, at my uh, my book, uh, so that was pretty neat to see. Uh, so that would have been hatched a year ago. The the one on the right hand side, uh, females look totally different. So. Um, um, would have been uh, I needed I needed that brush up, and uh, so that helped to see that bird. From which I've seen a lot of indigo bunnings this year. This has been a good year for indigo bunnings. Okay, next. Yeah, then further up when I was um, 
heading back up to the towards the prairie, uh, I heard a call of an eastern towhee. So I walked slowly, and I was peeking around a bush, and I spotted the female there, uh, who didn't stay very long at all. Um, and it was, it was low, level and it, it um, uh, took off, and I saw two birds fly, but they disappeared into more of the brush. And then um, I saw both of them fly across the trail, um, low, as they often are. I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them perch up as well and singing, but these birds weren't doing that. These birds are foraging. And so I just kind of watched and see, and they were in the woods there for a while, and then they came out. And so like this uh, male towhee I was able to get, he was right on the ground there, and uh, wasn't it getting any um, great views. And this was getting pretty close up to Hamilton Street, and so eventually the, the two birds took off, and they, they actually flew across Hamilton Street to the other side. But that was, I was happy to see, I'm always happy to see towhees. I was happy to hear towhees. They're, they're just a fun bird. So next, you know, back at the prairie, um, I, I wanted to spend some time watching the swallows, but then this brown-headed cowbird uh, had got my attention as well. And um, actually, I saw some brown-headed cowbirds back um, along the south. It was around where that um, cul-de-sac is for Reserve Way, and and um, I saw the these cat cowbirds doing this kind of thing. They would just perch there and they would spread out their wings and fluff up their feathers. And and so when I got to see this bird, I said, I got to take some pictures of this bird. And so that was that was a fun um, experience too, watching this guy. Next. And the swallows. You know, they were um, coming and going off the off the. Um, the boxes there, and uh, I was thinking I, if I got back there, I would spend more time trying to get some pictures of these swallows, but I didn't make it back, but uh, they're always fun to, to see, and uh, with their blue and uh, how act, just how active they are. Okay, next. Okay, a few more. Yeah, I had a chickadee and catbirds and... Um, Catbirds are the noisiest things. I don't know why they hide so much when they make so much noise. But um, and then um, yeah, I saw a couple of Orioles, and here's one of the Orioles that and that was down where it was mentioned too that uh, around down by that cul-de-sac area um, where uh, where I got that Baltimore Oriole. Next, if any left, uh, no. and then yeah, no. way up by Ham Hamilton Street. Yeah, that's um, I caught that one in that overcast sky, but at least I got it. I'm trying to figure out what kind of tree that is. That's an odd-looking tree. Um, yeah, I thought really, it was a it, really interesting picture. I I love how that's framed, um, and it's okay that it was high up and it's small because, like you said, the tree is really interesting. It's it's just a great picture overall. Yeah. That's a cottonwood. Right. <laughs> oh, cottonwood. Thank you, Nancy. That. That's a cottonwood? Yep. My goodness. I put it up on iNaturalist and they didn't identify it as such. And I'd, um, I had intended, actually, if I made it back, to take better pictures of that tree to figure it out. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who participated, Marianne and John Henderson, Nancy Howell, Sean Missig, and Tom Fishburn, and Western Reserve Land Conservancy for providing us with Overland Preserve. I've put the address to the parking area over Overland Preserve uh, right there. I, I plugged it into my GPS and found it just fine. Uh, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. This month, the month of June, I'm inviting all of you to visit uh, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, two suggested sites that I have, Beaver Marsh and Station Road, but you can go anywhere you want within the park um, if you have any favorite sites or, or places that you've heard of that you want to explore. I've already made my visit to Beaver Marsh. Hoping I'll get back out, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get down there again. 
So um, with that, I would like to open uh, the call up to discussion. Um, so if anyone has anything they would like to say or any questions, uh, please feel free to do so now. Tom, let me ask, I noticed you have the indigo buntings in a a tree with these little, uh, an elm tree, I think, with the little seed things on it. Was that by the, that wetland area in the woods? You know, there you go. Is that, yeah, I wasn't sure what you were referring to. That was south, south of the wetlands when I ran into those guys. South of the wetlands. Yeah. Okay. Not yeah, not not terribly far south. I didn't get all the way down to Route 20. Okay. I never made yeah. it down that far. Well, the wetlands is like halfway between the cul-de-sac and Route 20, approximately. Yeah. So it's yeah, so it's getting down there, but um, yeah, I I was still I think a ways from 20. Yeah, because on the but first visit, I, yeah, on the first visit I had um, purple finches, a lot of purple finches feeding on those same seeds. Uh, the the elm seed. Ah. So my goodness, yeah. That that was that was like a surprise for me. Not a lifer though. Yeah. Notice I don't get yeah. any lifers. <laughs> How come? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you didn't get a white tail a white tail kite this year? Did you ever get uh, a white tail? No, kite? no, I haven't. I haven't traveled. I don't know. Maybe I'll. Uh, I was thinking about trying this weekend as I'm heading down to West Virginia, but I think it's in a slightly different place from the way I go. So, what was the an Aninga at Lake Isaac a lifer for you, or have you yeah, seen one of those before? Yeah, let me think. Yes, it was a, an, a lifer for me. Yep. Well, fantastic. As so well you do as still the, get them. Well, as well as the um, that sparrow that was at uh, oh shoot the Brewers sparrow. Oh, yeah. That was at Wendy Park. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and I just yeah, want to say, Tom, one. these pictures of the brown-headed cowbird are fantastic. I, it, It's so beautiful. It makes me forget that it's a brood parasite and <laughs> that I don't like them for that reason. Yeah. Uh, but, it's you know, it's what it is. You know, if that's, you know, how it evolves to survive and reproduce. So, um but, you know, you, you feel sorry for the poor little warblers that it, it lays its eggs in its nest. But, yeah, well, beautiful and, photos. And a lot of people don't take photos of birds they don't like or common mm -hmm. species. I know, Michelle, you've taken photos of house uh, sparrows. Mm -hmm. I love these photos of the cowbird. And that other yeah. photo of the female cowbird with the male in the background that was kind of, oh, I, I think that's like, I love it. I mean, yeah. it's so cool. I don't know why. It's just, but it's just like there they are, right there. So and the, Tom, the, yeah, you said that you didn't like recognize this photo. I'll go back and make sure that it, it didn't come over in a weird way when I imported it. Um, but yeah, I recognize it. It's just that it, the back, the background there. It's it's it, it, it something's different about it. it mm -hmm. like, okay. It's not quite as uh, like my you know, original. Anyway, I'll re-download it and put it in and see if that makes it makes a difference. I'll do that after yeah, this call. Stuff, stuff that apparently happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, this again, this purple finches. I I rarely see purple finches. So I had a lot of purple finches. I had a lot of purple finches this year, and not as many indigo bunting. So. Uh, how about that? Yeah. I have yet to see an indigo, indigo bunting this year, so that's still on my year list. Yeah. Here's yeah. one. Learn, yeah. learn the you got you got to learn the sounds because you, you hear them mm -hmm. a lot more than you see them. That's yeah. for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's definitely a skill I need to develop. And I yeah. love this. And indigo I love I love the the tree swallows just with their wings and some really cute playful yeah. pictures here. Well, see, see, something happened with these too. There's when when you brought these over, um, the background to those pictures that, that I'm seeing anyway on my computer um, doesn't look the same as my originals. Okay. But um, but the birds the birds look okay. It's more more like the background. All right, and, I'll go uh, I'll go through and check. I don't maybe it's the way that it's just appearing through 
um, the conference call system, but I'll check and make sure that they match. Yeah, that that could be too. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy with how your photos. Oh, it's (laughs) it's quite right. But like like what you're saying though, it's just it's really neat to see these birds, you know, kind of flying with the wings open and action and that kind of thing. It's it's it's, they're nifty birds. I, I don't get tired of photographing tree swallows, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'd love to go back to that prairie again. But my, my sights are on the Cuyahoga Valley these days. Do I How many? Today? Uh, uh, did you get there today? Just for the first time in June. Okay. I, I spent time there. I spent time there in May. Mm-hmm. I have a particular interest um, in the Kendall Hill section, the Kendall Lake section. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, when I when I learned uh, that um, the prairie warblers are there, and um, so they were there today too. Oh, fantastic! And, uh, and blue winged warbler. I even got a hooded warbler today. Uh, oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, got my, yeah. Got some butterflies and dragonflies. What's the target species for the Cuyahoga Valley? So um, I, I picked a few different, depending on you know what site you're going to. But wood duck, you know, is is the first target species. So if you're going to Beaver Marsh, you know, I, I went there and I saw two separate families of wood duck. Um, and then also Orioles and Tanagers. Those are so three target species. We usually don't have that many, but. Well, the Orioles are going gangbusters along the Beaver Marsh area. Oh, really? I did. I went. I didn't see a single Oriole. Oh, <laughs> I just. Geez. I only oh, got the yes. little duck. I know. I. I, um, I, I didn't I, have my kids with me that time, so I can't blame it on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a nest of orchard Orioles, and it's about at eye level. Uh, it's at the south end of the marsh, and it's in a little tree that's overhanging the the wet area. Uh, kind of the canal area, and the okay. birds were just moving that, around. That's on the canal side, yeah? Yeah. And is the, is the south, tree... Just, just south of the beaver marsh, uh, the, the, the boardwalk. You yeah. step off the boardwalk, the south end, and there's a small tree that's kind of overhanging the, the, wet, like the wet area, and it's maybe eight feet eight foot tall tree but you stand there and it's just the nest uh-huh. is about at eye level you know it's, it's interesting because every time I go I'm looking for orchard orioles there because I rarely see orchard orioles um, but I was there in May and I did get to see an orchard oriole but it was a little distant it was across the canal hmm. um, and uh, but I've heard that they're, they're there and so thank you that's great that's a great tip Yeah, some years they're scarce, and other years, like this year, it's it's a it's a super orchard or super oriole year. Mm-hmm. There's also a kingbird nest um, there as well. So there are kingbirds flying around. I got some of the pictures of a kingbird. Um, Did you see their nest? I saw the nest. I never would have found it if I, I met someone who, you know, who had a camera just asked me if I had seen anything that day, and he knew of it, so he took me back and showed it to me. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's just high up in a tree, <laughs> and there's lots of trees there, so you kind of have to look, look for it. Um, and then there's tree swallows, and the tree swallows have a nest in a tree, there. I don't know if I've ever seen like a natural tree swallow nest. Usually I just see them in the bluebird boxes. <laughs> so that was kind of cool to see. And then lots is of red wing blackbirds. What's that? Is the tree swallow is the tree swallow uh, cav- cavity that you saw facing the boardwalk or facing the other way? It's facing away from the boardwalk. So if you go, if you're on the boardwalk and there's that, this that's area okay. that kind of shuts out. Yeah. So yeah, it's the area that. It. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's what I was wondering, yeah, except it's kind of tough because it was on the opposite side, yeah. Yeah, but if you go to that, I like, um, overlook area, that part of the boardwalk that kind of juts out, and you, you turn to the left, you're, it's, the mm-hmm. hole is right there, and you can kind of catch them yeah. as they're coming. I, they were too quick for me, but, you know, maybe you, right. you, you're a little more experienced, maybe you can get them. I, 
Yeah, that sounds like the same one I saw a month ago mm -hmm. or so. You was... get on the top rung of the rail, you lean way over, <laughs> you turn your body, <laughs> by your legs are wrapped around that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and you're a splash. It was a time. <laughs> it was a time when I was younger. I would wrap my legs and bend. Yeah. Those days are over. That's funny. All right. So, um, any last thoughts or comments before we wrap up today's virtual field trip? Right. Great well, fun as usual. Thank you. Nice hear, nice seeing the list and what people found and always good. All right, thank you, Nancy. Good variety. Yeah, good variety. Especially what Nancy found. Like you know, I had run into Diana Steele, um and um it's a favorite place. She lives in Oberlin, you know. And um uh, she's she's I think one of the she, maybe she's the northeastern director of the Ohio Ornithological Society, regional kind of advisor mm -hmm. or something like that. But um, yeah, she was happy to hear that Cuyahoga chose, chose Overland Preserve. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. I've been so wanting good. to visit it. I've been wanting to visit the location ever since I heard it open last year, so. This is the perfect opportunity. I know they have plans for uh, more trails. Um, they do want to put in a an underground railroad garden uh, at mm -hmm. some point. Uh, those I saw on a plan from the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. So again, it's still fairly new, and um, so yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you. Um, everyone for attending, and I hope to see you next month. Yep, at the next virtual Thanks. field trip. Thanks, everybody. Thanks right. for your lovely photos. All right. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Have a good night.